right. Welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today, we welcome back on the show Erica Visser Aragona. She is a family physician and she wrote the Kevin MD article Can Doctors Have Personalities? Erica, welcome back to the show. Thanks. I'm super excited to be here again. So nice to see you. So we'll get into your article in a little bit, but for those who didn't get a chance to listen to our first episode, can you just briefly share your story and journey to where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a dual board certified osteopathic and allopathic family medicine doctor. And I also teach at Idaho College of Osteopathic Medicine. So I provide lectures and I teach clinical skills to future doctors. And my practice is a younger demographic. So doing that plus teaching younger students really helped me dive into the realm of how do we stay engaged and um, really reaching a younger population, especially with COVID too, and um, transitioning into telemedicine platforms way more than I traditionally did in the past. So what's been nice is reaching out to patients with local news media and having a voice that way. So I'm now seeing myself transition into a lot more social media. I mean, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, most recently TikTok. And I laugh about that because I never thought I would be there, Um, but it's working. So um, currently I'm developing even my own website. It's uh, drdr-erica.com. And really what the platform is, is to showcase that we can have cheerfulness in medicine. Um, And what I want to do is highlight and blog about my experiences as a doctor, but also feature and highlight all the other physicians that are doing so much good on social media and bringing enthusiasm and relatability to the medical world. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. So tell me what it's like being a physician on social media, because it's certainly evolved, um, you know, during all the years that I've been at the intersection between social media and medicine. And especially, as you said, during COVID, everything is so polarized right now. There's a lot of misinformation and disinformation that is out on social media. So speaking from your standpoint as a physician, what, what is it like out there now? It's a brand new world for all of us. And it's tough because we're so scientifically and clinically trained. So I think what we're trying to do is branch out in a positive way, but there's a difficulty there where do physicians really fit in that social model? You know, so I think as a doctor, what we're trying to do as a whole is expand both the positives and also dispel the negatives of misinformation. So instead of just putting yourself out there and speaking medical truths, we're now seeing that we have to do that in a relatable, engaging, fun way, which is not necessarily something that we do in all of our medical writing. So what we're seeing now are a lot of physicians who are more vocal, but in creative narratives. And it's setting the tone that doctors can do so much more than be serious. In fact, I think that's the the double-edged sword that we get into so much is it kind of takes away our credibility from certain people watching it and saying, well, you can't be funny and sarcastic and have humor if you're going to be a serious scientist. Yeah, you can. In fact, we've seen so many doctors do this and do it well, where they don't lose a sense of their clinical know-how or their expertise whatsoever. They maintain professionalism, but they convey a point to a broader audience. That's what I think is so important in what we're trying to convey here is you can absolutely do both and you can blend it really well to help the general public even more so than traditional medicine in the past. And you certainly talk about uh, more about that in your Kevin MD article, can doctors have personalities? Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read that article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? Yeah, I think there's, there's two main points that I wanted to convey when I wrote that one, uh, I want to reverse the stereotype that doctors can't be human or have lives outside of work, or if we do, that we're unprofessional. You know, society has been conditioned to expect physicians to be normalized in a way of unrealistic expectations, seriousness, medical studies, and that's it. Um, But what if we celebrated us as being people too and celebrated the same milestones for physicians that we do everyone else? What if we educated the public to um, change that narrative and, and show them that your personality actually makes you a better physician? You relate more to your patients. So I wrote that to change the perspective um, uh, and show the voices of both social media and kind of our personalities and highlight them and and help physicians be brave and bold and future physicians never lose their personalities from the beginning. Focus on their rigorous studies, never lose sight of that. We're scientists and physicians first, we know that, but why can't we show that trust to our patients and get along in a way that relates to them even better? 
So um, when I was writing that, I thought there were a couple of really interesting articles and I'd love to share them. So there's a 2019 University of Oxford Business School um, uh, journal article that came out and they found that uh, productivity increased by 13% in happy workers. Now this was work environment, right? So we're not talking happiness based on your personal lives or what you brought to the table. But I also thought it was interesting that Forbes in 2018 quoted a finding from Warwick University where they said companies like Google, for example, who invested more in employee support and employee happiness, their satisfaction was 37%. Mm-hmm. There has to be a way that that translates then to medicine as well, right? It's the same concept. But instead of just bringing happiness to the work environment, which I think is very fundamental and crucial, and we need to talk about how we can help that with administration, but that's a different article I'll write another time. Mm-hmm. What I want to talk about now is the happiness level. What does that mean? Happy doctors. What, is, what does that translate into? Right. So there was a, a research and organizational uh, behavioral journal published in 2010. It's a longer and older study, uh, but it was by Brent Rosso et al. on the meaning of work. And what they talked about was a theoretical integration and review to find meaning in one's work. And what does that mean? It increased motivation, engagement, individual performance, personal fulfillment, and decreased stress. So now we're not just happy, we're more successful. And if we extrapolate this, physicians are happier at work. We find more meaning in work. We already have a life purpose. We love serving our patients, but now we're forming these real relationships. And I believe that when physicians are more satisfied, more fulfilled and more productive, it directly will then translate into their patient care. Now give us some examples, stories, case studies that uh, either from yourself or from your colleagues about how physicians are specifically showing their personalities online and on social media. Oh, wow. So I've got a long list of doctors that I admire. And, you know, I I broke it down kind of into four different categories and there's more. But um, first of all, you look at large grand scale news media. So national news, we've got Dr. Jen Caudill, we've got Dr. Sanjay Gupta, Dr. Tanya Altman, um, Dr. Alana Levine. The last two I've actually spoken with personally. And what I love about them is you can sense their passion for providing the most up to date current medical information across the grand scale. So they're giving patients who maybe don't have access to direct care or maybe have found misinformation online, a face, a doctor, a vocal representation of what's out there. And I think that's pivotal in today's society where anybody can put anything out there, but you want to make sure that it's accurate. Mm -hmm. So I have a huge respect for what they're doing, but then you look at other types of doctors too. So speaking of television, we've got doctors like Dr. Pimple Popper, right? Um, Dr. Kat from Dr. 90210, Dr. Tiffany Moon from The Real Housewives of Dallas. And what I love about these doctors is they're bringing something new to the the scene. They're showcasing that they're extremely successful in their specialties, but they have a personality. They're bringing the fun to life and showing that to a general audience. Mm -hmm. Um, What I think is interesting is Dr. Moon uh, has said something that really resonated with me. Um, She contemplated being on, on TV in the first place because she said she worked her entire life to be where she was right now. And she didn't want to be invalidated because she was on television. But then she said, I thought it would be a really good platform. Um, to showcase a real life working mom and to use it to share my story and educate and inspire young women. Uh, How beautiful is that to be Mm -hmm. vulnerable, expose yourself, but to do it for a greater good where you're so admirable because you're bringing this new light to medicine. And then we've got social media platform leaders uh, like Dr. Sina Gori. I love what she's doing. She's on FemHealth and I've gotten to, to write for them, which is great. It's a platform talking about feminine health needs. It's articles by physicians, podcasts by physicians, but it's accessible to anybody. If you just click on the website, it's free, it's accessible, it's grand scale, and it's clinically based, medically relevant information. So again, you're getting information that's accurate, but it's written in a way that the general public can understand. And I think that's a huge area where we can just gravitate towards and physicians can expand upon. We need to write more and get our voices out to really help reach people who might not be coming into the clinic or... Mm -hmm maybe leaving and have more questions or are reading information online and searches that aren't accurate. Um, Dr. Hollis Sabri is another one. She created the National Women Physicians Day. She created the Physician Moms Group on Facebook. That was one of the most successful Facebook groups. So she even got hired by Facebook. I mean, that's how awesome this doctor is. And now she works with uh, multiple organizations, including Doctorpedia. It's another platform online that gives doctors voices. So they can talk about medical topics show their credentials, their board certification, and patients can click through very quick videos to find the information that they need. Keeps their attention, it's captivating, it's personalized, but you know you're getting information that's accurate. I think that's incredible. 
And then I really want to talk about social media influencers because I think that they are like the new up and coming uh, doctors who are bridging that gap of sarcasm and seriousness so beautifully. You know, so we've got like Mama Dr. Jones on YouTube. And then there's Dr. Austin. He's a gastroenterologist. He's on TikTok. And then Dr. Vicki Chan. She's on Instagram, TikTok. And then most people probably have heard of Dr. Mike. If you think of social influencers, he's one of the most prevalent names that comes up. What I think that they're doing that is so important and prudent to the social media platform is they are showing that doctors can have fun and also still be so technically and scientifically relevant and be trusted to provide you with accurate medical advice. So Dr. Mike also said the lack of quality physicians on social media is really dangerous because it's led to the rise of social influencers peddling miraculous cures. And he said, you know, doctors for a while didn't want to be on social media because they were afraid to be perceived as unprofessional. And as a result, misinformation was thriving. He couldn't have been more accurate. And I love what all of these doctors are doing. And most of them are on multiple platforms. So not just YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, uh, but branching out across the globe on different spectrum where patients can find their information, have fun, they're relevant and they're trustworthy, you know? So they're, they're giving good advice, but they're reaching maybe a younger population that doesn't go to doctors yet or maybe dispelling medical misinformation and replacing it with truth. And what they're doing is they're now putting that in the hands of everybody watching. I think that's incredible because it's an engaging way. And you didn't know I was going to say this, Kevin. So anybody watching, you have no idea I was going to say this either. He doesn't know, uh, but there's you, Kevin. And I think what you're doing is incredible and it's pivotal and it needs to be celebrated because it's a movement. And what you're doing is you're creating a voice for healthcare. Not a lot of people have done that. And you're allowing us to share our experiences for the greater good. And what we're able to do is make connections directly because of you. I met Dr. Tagsy Gaines on your podcast connected with her. She's a social media mm -hmm. coach, but there's so much more than that. You are dispelling misinformation. You are providing accurate information. You are allowing our faces to be seen, our voices to be heard. So there's so much to gain from this. And I, I honestly want to thank you for that because this is a movement that can't stop. If the information is going to be out there, we need to make sure that it's correct. So it does way more good than harm. Well, thank you so much, Erica. I really appreciate that. And, and I completely agree with everything that you say is that if we physicians aren't online and dispelling that information, there's going to be others who will take that place of social media influencers and peddle information that isn't necessarily accurate. Now, one of the areas of pushback sometimes I get is that the more physicians show their personality online, the more vulnerable they appear online, they're going to open themselves up to more criticism and pushback. And that just goes with the territory. Now, what kind of advice can you give to physicians who may experience some pushback the more they show their personalities online? Yeah, do it anyway. Absolutely do it anyway. Um, I had to get a tougher skin. I'll be honest. I got a lot of comments I wasn't anticipating when I started. And a lot of them are mean and they might not be rooted in truth, but they're out there. And what we need to say is, well, everyone has an opinion, but we still have a responsibility to provide accurate information and help the public. I mean, that's our role. And another thing to think about is we are helping patients more, the more personable and social and engaged we are. In fact, there was a 2019 um, Duke Center for Personalized Health article that featured uh, the importance of physician-patient relationships and communication, trust, in healthcare. They started with a quote um, from Hall et al. from 1981, but this is what it said. I, I love it. Medicine is an art whose magic and creative ability has long been recognized as residing in the interpersonal aspects of patient-physician relationships. Notice they didn't talk about science other than the word medicine and physician. What do they say? Art, magic, creative ability, interpersonal relationships. So effective patient-physician communication that they found in this writing was positively influencing health outcomes. This is something that is key. So we're increasing patient satisfaction, which then led to increased compliance, better health outcomes. This is proven facts. When patients are happy and they're listening and you're engaged, they're more likely to remember what you said take that advice home and follow the instructions. So absolutely, if we are engaged and happy and personable and bring that to the table where the patient then trusts us and we develop that rapport, we're serving the greater good. So it's not just that we're goofy and dancing and having fun, we're building those long-term relationships that make a difference. So you know, healthcare is becoming more specialized and patient-centered, we know that. And the patient-physician relationship is significantly shaping those health outcomes. So evidence-based medicine, I think what we need to focus on is always gonna be there. 
we're still scientists. Again, we're not going to lose sight of that just because we have humor, but mm -hmm. that's where the bias comes into play. And I want to dispel that. I want to kind of reshape that stereotype so that we can establish a rapport, engage with our patients, assess every individual's preference, right? How they like to learn. So if they need a serious doctor, we're serious in the clinic. If they need a doctor who hugs them and talks to them about their families and their dog and their social life and bonds over the last concert we both attended together, we're going to do that. Sometimes the best work that I do is listening and not talking. When we just sit back and we're mm -hmm. quiet and we give patients that space, they will tell us so much more about themselves, way more than what their chart will tell us. That's how we form those bonds and how we break down those barriers and serve our patients the best. We're talking to Erica Visser Aragona. She is a family physician and she wrote the Kevin MD article, Can Doctors Have Personalities? Erica, so for those physicians who do want to show more of their personalities online and build more of an online presence to do everything that you want them to do, how can they get started? I think the first thing is just to get out there. Um, a lot of the names that I threw out, I'd love for you and everyone to, to check out those doctors because they're doing it. They're doing so much good. And you can see how it's been successful and you can replicate it in your own voice, in your own narrative. And I think the take home message would be, let's take it back. Let's take medicine back. Let's make it accurate. Let's get rid of the information and let's make the internet a platform that does so much more positive when physicians finally speak out and show their true colors in a positive and respectful manner and also make it fun and relatable. Erica, thank you again for joining me on the show. Thanks for your time and insight. And thanks again for sharing your, your enthusiasm. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.